Welcome, welcome, welcome to another awesome episode, Track One Jinx. We got a little bit of a special treat for you in this in this video. I'm gonna show you guys some catches, of course, a little bit of coyote strategies. I, I'm wrapping up my Iowa line today. I'm gonna bring on Jason Vance. He's a professional trapper out of Maine. His quest is to catch a thousand coyotes this year. Uh, he's rolling right along right now. So, um, if uh, enjoy this video and uh, here we go. Have a great day. Welcome to another awesome episode of Trapping with Jinx. Today, uh, we're up in Iowa. I'm trapping with the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Jason Vance. And uh, we're doing a, a ride along today. So he's passing through, going to go through his Kansas property, and he's getting ready to, to trap Kansas, right? Yep, going to be there for three or four months down there so. yeah so he blessed me with a visit today we're up in iowa he's just doing a ride around um uh, i will have his description uh and all of his information down below if you guys want to hit him up um and probably do a collab video maybe later later on i know yep. i'm putting it on camera but yeah uh, but uh, anyways we want to talk about uh welcome to this episode we're gonna have some catches in here um and we're gonna talk a little bit of strategy with uh, jason vance as we're kind of breaking down a piece um i'm on a, a new cold rolling property up in iowa flat ground it's really pretty pretty stuff uh and we had this system here the farmer was telling me about all of these holes and originally i thought maybe it was coyotes but jason you're pretty confident though it's these are badger badgers diggers. Okay. yeah I, I very rarely ever catch a badger in my state um but yeah i had on one of my previous episodes i had just i'd caught a coyote right here and now today when we were rechecking it we noticed that a coyote had worked the set so we did fence him in a little bit and but we did notice uh some evidence over here we go over there and talk about that and, okay. okay so we came to this this spot here it looked like a real active uh den uh and uh we noticed that the tracks on there um jason what do, what do you think about this well i mean they're investigating it so what i my thought was is you know you creating like a, a walk through set because he's going to want to smell what's in there check it out um and then out here where you put your um set here it's almost like a walk through set where you put two punches um put two different odors so if he comes in here milling around smelling in here he comes over here and he catches these two odors here he's going to play around here and hopefully you should be able to catch him right yeah, yeah. right there it's just a great location yeah. um the act of dirt is eye appeal out here so it's going to draw the coyotes in so mm -hmm. so uh i got beat on a pan cover and uh <laughs> that's what got underneath my skin and then we had to put this second set in and uh i don't like getting beat so get uh we just kind of have a trail set like jason was saying so right here is the set and then we just kind of skimmed it across and uh hoping we can connect on the coyote that we missed because we don't like getting beat do we jason nope <laughs> gotta get rid of those pan covers welcome to another <laughs> awesome episode let's have some catches and have some fun so here's the finished set and uh we won't have any issues with that coyote putting his foot right there right jason right i mean you created a backing as you, when you came in you could see where the coyote worked the back yeah you want to take that and make force him to come around here and work the set from yeah. this direction yeah. so um and by doing that you can guide coyotes and you can tell you know make them put their foot where you want to yeah so. yeah absolutely so that's the finished set and uh okay folks so we're about midway halfway almost all the way through the line and we're talking about 
uh, me and Vance are talking about uh, these properties. Uh, as a trapper, when you're cold rolling new ground, like all of this Iowa stuff to me is brand new. And we're, I seem like I'm setting a lot. And my question for Vance was, as we, we've gone through two properties now, and uh, I, I asked Jason about setting, was I setting too much? Because that's, you know, we can kind of overthink things as trappers. When you're going into new ground, you're setting new ground. Um, am I setting too much? And, and Vance, your your an, your answer. Tell me about what, what. How would you? How do you? How would you field that question? If um, I going into a new location, I mean, you try to set up every location that you can, um, and then filter out the ones that don't work the following year. Yeah. Um, every year is going to be different. I mean, the animals, whatever they whatever they plant the crops change everything so for a couple of years i think it takes you two or three years to figure out a an area and then you start to you know shrink your your trap numbers down yeah so, so like the spots that are that are catching this year potentially will be the spots that i'll want to target next year next year and then the spots that i'm not catching are the ones that you're going to weed out or do different, is that about right? Yeah, do different or make, you know, yeah, just weed them out a little bit. That way you're not setting so many and you can yeah. jump onto other ground and. And uh, so I, I, I just, I just wanted to share that with you guys on the channel. Um, if you guys are struggling with new ground and you, you go out, you set a bunch and you have high expectations and then you, you start w realizing I'm checking a bunch of empty traps that your trap line next year will only get better. Better, better yeah. yeah. And that's how you really, is that how you put up, is that how you help put up numbers? Numbers, yeah, because that way you can narrow it down, get to more locations. You know, you may have 20 traps in there. Like I was telling you about that gravel pit back home, it's one mile long, and I only have 10 traps in it total. Yeah. I mean, but over the years, I've narrowed the locations down to where they're moving through the area, and you can do the same thing at pretty much any area, but it's not going to be an instant thing. You're gonna, yep. It's going to take you a couple of years to, to figure it out. There you go, folks. A nugget of wisdom. If you guys are struggling and you, and you just wanted to know, you got it from the doctor, Dr. Vance. <laughs> We're uh, working some of these properties. Uh, Jason had some nice suggestions for me, and uh, I'm implementing those suggestions. And uh, you guys are going to benefit that on the channel. So we'll just keep checking traps and see what we catch the rest of the day. And uh, we're not discouraged one bit at all because that's that's what happens in trapping. We just keep driving by and keep checking traps. Okay, this is the day where we catch big old Butterball Iowa raccoon. <laughs> what do you think that weighs? Probably 25, 30 pounds. That's almost twice the size of a main coon. He's twice as well. Probably a three or four X, you think? Yeah, that's a nice coon. So we caught him on the edge of the pond dam here and uh, right around this corner. Pretty wild. Let's get that dispatched. Okay, guys, I apologize if the wind is real bad. Uh, we're on one of my last properties. It's uh, corn, rolling hills. Got a lot of tall, tall grasses, native grasses. And we're just breaking down a property, Vance and I are, and we're we're looking at it. Uh, let's see, where are we going? We've got this piece here to show you guys, and we were talking about the just kind of the way the system works. And um, one thing that we really noticed about this property, we I think we wanted to share that with you guys, was there's this long fence row that goes for miles but it connects uh it connects right here at this grass point we did an rj set on the fence uh vance and i we both know this is going to be a, a, a set that's good and it's just a matter of time on these sets so we didn't catch today and a lot of trappers we get kind of discouraged but vance had a, a really good suggestion that i took to heart and um, he's gonna go ahead and share that with you so that you guys on the channel can also see how 
I improved this set to make it even better. Um, what I what I like to do is this this area here is huge. Um, it's a lot of land. So um, with this trap being up here in the corner, what I like to do at all my sets um, actually is I like to put a little bit of I put a little bit of skunk at every location. I don't put it at the trap as much as just next to it because the coyote's going to want to roll in it. But right now you got some wind here, and if you put a little bit of skunk on that um, fence post over there, it's going to carry over. So if the coyotes are coming down another section over here, down through this little draw, they catch wind of that. They're going to come. That they're going to it's going to pull them up here to this set, and then. Once they've, they're up here, they mill around, they're gonna smell the, the bait and the odor from the, the set that you have. And it just increases your catch, um, your chances of catching them because you can draw those coyotes from different areas. Use the wind in the, the uh, long distance call. Yep. So. There you go, guys. So if you're, so if you're, you're in that area where it's, it's wide open and you could use that long distance call to help play to your advantage um Van especially suggests if you're in a new area i mean yeah you can you're not quite sure of the the set location but you know if you put a trap in and you can pull in from you know 100 yards away 50 yards away um it just increases your odds of catching them very good there you go okay there you go guys a nice helpful tip from vance and try it out on your line use that ldc caller and that really helps a big difference Okay, folks, I hope you guys liked that episode. Caught a raccoon today, and we're looking over some ground. Uh, I've got Jason Vance with me here today. Um, thanks, Vance, for coming out on the line. I had a good time, um, and I'm glad, glad you came. No, thanks for inviting me. It was just interesting to see another part of the country and, you know, what, what what's out there to look and go on somebody else's trap line and see what they do and, you know, Two, sometimes you can throw something to somebody that's trapping that here try this idea you know yeah. vice versa I mean you're always learning with trapping you know so yeah it just it helps going with somebody else and seeing somebody else's perspective of the there location is. so there you go so you got Vance in Iowa next year maybe he'll come back and, <laughs> and, and load up on some coons, and coons. Some there's and... a lot of coons <laughs> down here so we got a great big butterball coon and and uh, uh, it was just kind of interesting how Vance was talking about the raccoons in Maine aren't quite as big as they are in Iowa. And no, these, these ones are double the size of... <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. So um, I hope you guys like this episode. We, we, I'm going to put Vance's uh, information in the description down below. Check out his YouTube channel. Um, hit him up on Instagram and Facebook when he heads out to Kansas. We'd like to give him a whole bunch of followers. Uh, he's got great content, a great trapper. And it's always a pleasure having him around. So thanks, no, thanks, thanks, Jason, for coming. And uh, thanks for having me. Yep. So check him out. Make sure you guys show some support to Jason. Wow, another nice Iowa beautiful coyote. There you go. Get vocal, buddy. A little scruffy. A little scruffy. I set this one with uh, Lisa Rusatz. Uh He's got a bait. I think it's a predator bait. And then his uh, liquid frenzy. That's what caught him. Nice front foot catch. Can't beat that. I'm averaging about a coyote a day right now. Which isn't too bad. It's not cold. But it's starting to get there, right? <laughs> I'm going to get this dispatched and uh, we'll keep moving down the road. Nice coyote. This is one of those sets I just can't stand checking because of this hill. But I've caught two coyotes off this hill now. Off this little little feeder ditch. So they go up and over the hill. Usually the points are pretty good. But it, it kind of jets out right here. So I figure, you know, me being the mole trapper that I am <laughs> in my mole business, you learn, you learn how things kind of travel by seeing that point so they're either on this one here they're in hunting or they're they're going to skirt that point so i usually try to set off on the points and uh yeah it's kind of what it's kind of how you kind of narrow them down the top piece would have been good up here 
and I, I ended up setting two. So we've caught two coyotes at this location in the last probably three days. And uh, I'll reset that. And hopefully, maybe I'll catch another one, right? Uh, this would make coyote number eight. So pretty nice coyote. Oh, yellow belly. Pretty, real pretty coyote. My mange right now is probably at about 30%. So I've got 30% of my coyotes have some form of mange on them. This one's a real pretty coyote. So pretty happy to be able to harvest that. And uh, let's keep moving down the line. Holy cow, guys. This is probably, I've been trapping 24 years. This is the second badger I've ever caught. 24 years. And the, the first one I caught was in a culvert trapping raccoons. I might have caught one more, I don't remember, but. Holy cow, guys. Big, beautiful badger something else really a pretty good day today <laughs> badger coyote uh, good location got this creek system going this way another feeder type filter and uh, i got another set over here and uh these two sets have set pretty empty other than a few raccoons here and there but big Big, big badger, guys. He's hustling, hustling at me. Mean. Mean. Oh my gosh, he's mean. All right, I'm gonna get the dispatch reset. Keep moving down the line. There you go, guys. Nice double. Beautiful. You know, great set location. These two traps sat here literally a whole week before I connected on them. Deep catch. There you go, guys. Great opportunity trapping off of that nice pinch point brush pile. I love it. Super awesome. Keep going, right? <laughs> Both of these were in a, a Vance Final Demise, if you're wanting to know about the bait, and his LDC collar on the side. Uh, this is my top producing set. You set it once, and then a week later, you still catch, right? Just a matter of time, waiting on them to come through, right, guys? Anyways, I'm going to get these dispatched. We'll keep moving. Hey, guys, I hope you guys like that episode. Today, we caught this really, really nice badger. And uh, had a great time doing it. And probably one of my nicer coyotes that I've caught this year. So it's been a good time. So uh, anyways, I hope you guys like this type of content. Let me know in the comment section down below. I'm kind of putting all this together for you guys. So I hope you guys like it. I caught this really nice badger today. And coyote, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe. Otherwise, click the big thumbs up. I'm Jinx. And have a great day.